Hi, this is Irv Shapiro, aka Dr. Vax, and today I'm going to take you on a three-part journey. In this journey, we're going to create a gift for my 90-year-old father. It's a lithophane. A lithophane is a three-dimensional image that is originally, historically, carved in porcelain and lit from behind, where the carving is thicker, the image that's displayed that you see is darker. Where the image is thinner, the carving is thinner, the image is lighter. So we're going to do that with online web tools. We're going to create the top half of this gift with a 3D CAD program, Fusion 360, computer-aided design. We're going to go into the workshop and create out of oak a beautiful base for this, and then we're going to assemble it all together. So part one, we'll be using online tools to create the lithophane. Part two, we'll be creating the wood base, and part three, we'll be assembling it together. Okay, let's get started and learn something together. Okay, I just finished collecting together all of the components of this build. I uploaded it to Thingiverse, and you'll be able to search for it there under Irv Shapiro as the author. So let me take you through the steps that are necessary to build this. And the first step is you have to select an image. In my case, I selected three images. And then you have to position them create the right size composite image, convert it to black and white, not absolutely required, but it'll give you a better sense of how it will look once you produce it. Then after you have an image in the right size, you go to the 3D Rocks Lithophane application. This is a free website where you can take and upload an image and convert it to a lithophane. Then finally, as the last step, we're going to go into Fusion 360 and look at how to create the pieces for the frame that will fit with our lithophane. Okay, let's back up and get started with the first step, which is going to be to create the photo. Now, I personally like to use Affinity Photo. I also use Photoshop. Those are both paid applications. There's a free application, however, called Photor, F-O-T-O-R, which works just fine for our purposes. So I went to photor.com. I did register for free. I'm going to edit a photo. I'm going to click on open from my computer. I'm going to pick an image of my son and two grandsons. And first, let's convert this to black and white to see how it will look. Now, under effects in Photor, there are a whole bunch of effects. The ones with uh, the symbol next to them, the little flag, are only available if you upgrade to a paid subscription. I'm on a free subscription. And so I'm going to go down here to Retro and select the effect Inkwell. And that does a really nice job of creating the right density black and white image. I'm going to say apply. And now I'm going to create a snapshot of that image. That will save it so I can get to it from the other components within Photor. Okay, now I'm going to switch to design mode in Photor. So I went into edit mode, I loaded an image, I applied a filter. So we're going to leave this site. It's going to go to the design site. And now I'm going to create a custom design. So I'm going to create a custom design by 1179. And the reason for that size is that's the size that my frame that I uploaded to Thingiverse is in. So we'll see here. And now I'm going to import an image. And the image I'm going to import is the black and white image that I had saved previously. So let's see if we can find that on the cloud. We can right here. 
So click, click that here. And now I'm going to drag it to the corner. And then by pulling on a corner, I'm going to resize it so it takes about a third of this frame. Then I'm going to hit Control C, or in the case of a Mac, Command C and Command V. That will copy it. Command C, Command V, or Control C, Control V. I'm going to do it one more time and use that to fill our frame. Let's move these over so they look like they're all three about the same size. Now, for your real lithophane, you probably want to use three different images, but this will just give you an idea of how this would work. Now I'm going to say save, and let me call this lithophane final, and click download. Now it is very, very important that you make sure you know where these are going. So if you look down here, I'm using Chrome, and I recommend you use Chrome. You'll see that it shows you where it's downloaded, and there's usually a little arrow next to it. Now, depending on your operating system, it says show in Finder, but you could either open it or show it in the file navigation tool on your operating system. So I'm gonna say show in Finder, and it's in my download folder. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my lithophane creation tool. That's at 3dp.rocks lithophane. And you're best off setting your settings before you load an image, because once you load an image, um, it will continue to re-render it in the background and that makes it relatively slow. So I'm going to go to model settings, I want my model to be 250 millimeters in uh, maximum size. That's going to be the width, four millimeters thick, a four millimeter border, 0.8 millimeters max, the thinnest layer. That's where it's going to be the thinnest. If you go too much thinner than that, it will tend to break apart when you print it. So since I'm using a printer with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, that means it's going to be two layers thick at the thinnest point. Vectors per pixel tells it the accuracy of the conversion. I find anything over four just runs too slow to be really usable. I'm going to put a base of 10 millimeters and leave curve alone. So let's click on image now. We're going to say choose file. I'm going to go to my download area and let's see if we can find the file that we created. There we go. I'm going to open it up. And now the magic occurs. And you'll see here, and I can use the scroll wheel on my mouse to see that it converted it to a lithophane. And I can press on the left mouse button and rotate this around. I'm going to convert it to an outer curve. That's what this frame is designed in that I have in Thingiverse and click on refresh. This will take just a second. And now I'm gonna scroll out and take a look at this and we can see this lithophane produced on a curve setting. So now we will download this. Once again, make sure you know where your downloaded file is going because now we're going to go to the third step. And the third step is to go into a CAD program and create the rest of the top structure for this lithophane. So if we go back to here and take a look at this picture, you'll see this top area here is all 3D printed, the 90s, the top of the lithophane, the base and the back. And the bottom area is produced in wood. You could also 3D print the bottom area. For this example, I used wood. I think it's very important to recognize that just because you have a 3D printer doesn't mean you have to 3D print everything in plastic. So I'm a big fan of combining multiple materials. So let's open up Fusion 360, and I'm going to back up in my timeline here. And what I did here is I imported this mesh or STL file. 
An STL file is called a mesh file because it's made of very small triangles. That's the way you create a 3D item that you're going to ultimately 3D print. And I did that by saying insert mesh. And I loaded this mesh into um, my model. Whoops. And I can zoom in or I can reposition here. I can rotate. Whoops. Let's take and go here to rotate. And we can see how this looks. Let's click over here and you can rotate this 3D mesh. Okay, now, in order to draw on this, I'm going to go to the top view. I go into sketch mode, and I'm going to produce a sketch that outlines the frame I want to attach. Then once I have that sketch complete, I'm going to extrude it, and you can see here now that we have our mesh on the front, our lithophane, and we have a three-dimensional object on the back. If I go over here to this light bulb and I hide the mesh, I can now output this, output this. Um, I can, in fact, just right-click on it and say Save as STL. And then I have a file ready for my 3D printer. So the steps were find an image, convert the image to black and white in the right size. Use the Lithophane website right over here to convert this to an STL file. Then load the STL file into your CAD program. And you could do this with other CAD programs besides Fusion 360. However, these files tend to be relatively large, so you need a program that can handle the size. And then I took and I produced all of the different components. So here's an example. Here's the base. And here is, oops, that's actually the top. And here is the base. And then finally, I also used Fusion 360 to model the numbers, and I put little tabs on the back so they'll stand up a little bit better. We can see here, whoops, let's see if we can uh, rotate this a bit. Here are the numbers, and you can see there are little tabs on the back. Now, one other thing you need to know, when you load this into your 3D printer to print, you want to print the lithophane standing up. And the reason is that then your layer lines um, will be minimized by the three-dimensional shape. You'll get the best accuracy and the lithophane will work the best. Okay, I hope this was helpful. And in the next video, I'll show you how I manufactured, fabricated the wood base. And then in the final video, we'll talk about um, how we assembled it all together. Thanks. Let's continue learning things together. Please subscribe. Please like this video. Have a great day.